Hey, what's up? what's going on, everyone? This is my fourth episode of our new podcast. Uh, it's been some time since I uh, did a podcast. We are recording this um, during the end of 2021, during holiday season and Omicron season. It's been quite crazy here. So the time between my episodes has been kind of uh, further than I would like it to be with kids at home and Christmas and disease going around. But here we are. Now, the person I have with that I'm going to that you see on your screen now that we're going to be talking with, I I had a vision of having him on later on. Um, I didn't want to have him on so soon inside of this thing, but unfortunate serious events have occurred recently that uh, that hit hit home uh, more him than hit me. Then I thought it was probably a good time to have him on in this episode. Now I'm going to give you an introduction to who he is. His name is Josh Vega. Also, Bobby Millette is what his pseudo name is, <laughs> and Josh. Let me give you, uh, you know, I'm give you a little bit of information about him. So Josh and I, were, I remember exactly where we met the first time we met. And I don't remember that with a lot of people uh, where we met. But the people who have a very profound impact on your life, you seem to know where you met them at or where you connected with them at. And the circumstances were one where, if I'm being honest, I, I judged a book by its cover and I hated on him a little bit before I got to know him. <laughs> I don't even know if he knows this, and I'll let him say his piece in a minute. Um, but this this is all going to come around in a few seconds. But basically, we were – at the time, I was still bartending, and I was going from one bar, uh, the Ale House, Coral Springs Ale House, and I was going to Brew's Room, the competitor that I opened up essentially across the street. I had I had enough with it, my Ale House days, and I – I, I went, went went across the street, and I brought with me another bartender. Her name was Jessica, um, and we're in training, and we're sitting in this big training room, um, and she's just like googly eyed over this guy the whole time. <laughs> and I don't even know if he knows this, so she's all googly eyed over him, and um, and I hated on him right away. It's not like I had a thing for her or anything like that. We've been friends forever, but I'm like, how come no one's getting all googly eyed over me? You know, <laughs> with what I didn't get it. I didn't see, you know, but he had this, uh, you know, he had he had like that thug look mentality <laughs> where he is in there, right? And the dreads and too. Yeah, yeah. See, you had dreads. You had the mm -hmm. hat with the flat bill to the side. Your <laughs> parents were way too big, probably. I don't know. And I'm sitting. I'm like, what does she see? I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> and ironically. Um, you know, when I met, when I ended up uh, become friends with him, he was ended up being my uh, bar back at the bar. He was the guy, you know, bar backs are the guys who change the beers and change the kegs and restocks the liquor. And we develop a uh, very similar mutual interest in life. This is going on 15, 10, 12 years ago. And uh, we connected very well. We ended up being really good friends. I sold him and his mother's uh, place in Margate, Florida. And um, we could talk more about the series of events that led up to that. So, Josh is an extremely creative guy who motivates me constantly, whether he knows it or not. He's oh, he's a type of guy fuel. He fuels himself over just uh, abundance of curiosity. He things to learn and adjust to it and to apply it to his life. And I just admired that. Um, and now he does uh, the video production and photography for my team. And he's a really super guy, a super talented guy that I feel like everyone should get to know. So he's definitely, you know, you find him on Instagram or Facebook, whatever, follow him, become his friend. He's probably in the top five people I've ever met. And I'm very lucky uh, to be able to call him my friend, even though I didn't like him when I first saw him. <laughs> so <laughs> with that, this is Josh Vega. And um, yeah, did you even know that those all those I, I, events even happen? No, I, I well, I never knew that that you had an initial dislike for me. Um, that's, that's new to me, but I totally get it. Um, and I, I, I understand, uh, you know, that judging a book by its cover because I didn't look like this, you know, I didn't wear the collared shirts. I didn't have the slick back businessman hair. Um, you know, I, yeah, like, like you mentioned, I had dreads, I wore baggy clothes. I, I had the gangster look and, uh, yeah, when you look at people, you, you tend to assume, you know, what a person's like when, when you, uh, when you first see them. But, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's funny to hear, um, something I wanted to mention too, that, uh, it looks like you, um, you change your background. You, you're looking a little bit more professional there now, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to look like a, like a pro here. Uh, <laughs> trying to be so, like you. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell everyone a little bit about myself as well. Um, you know, 
I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a high school dropout with, I guess, not a whole lot of book smarts, but with a whole lot of street smarts. I've uh, My motto is, you know, try and fail, but if you're going to fail, fail fast and learn from your mistakes. Uh, I, I guess I consider myself a, a serial entrepreneur. I, I love the process of building things. Um, I if, if I find something that I'm interested in, I become like a sponge and I put myself 110% into it until I, 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 I know it like the back of my hand. Um, I've tried so many different things in the last 10, 15 years and I've, I've built all different types of little businesses here and there from fight wear brands to t-shirt companies. I've had five years of digital marketing experience with uh, a medical company. I've, I've managed uh, marketing campaigns that had budgets of a few million dollars. Uh, I know how to generate leads, run Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube. Uh, like Chris mentioned, uh, I, I'm, I'm now in uh, video or content creation when it comes to uh, video and photo, specifically real estate at the moment. Um, and well, so, yeah, let's, I... Let's uh, talk about how that, how that came in, into fruition, that part. Um, if you don't mind, I, I can the, shed some light the on real it. estate, uh, videography and all that. Well, I can give you my take on it and maybe you have a different one. Sure. You can go ahead real quick. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to cut you, not to cut yeah, you go off. Ahead. I, do, I do have that habit of cutting people off. All right. So from what I recall, you know, Josh and I parted, I, I, my wife got pregnant with our first kid and I and ended up, I've always was in real estate, but then I really got into it full time again because I didn't want to, you know, be I didn't want to bartend and have kids and and all that. Which is nothing wrong with it. It's just the schedules don't mesh. And anyways, so I got out of, out of the uh, bar industry and went full bore into real estate at that time. Um, and I'm very glad that I did so. It's amazing what happens when you get motivated. And uh, Josh and I kind of just disconnected for a while. Um, and then I noted, I but I always paid attention to him because he's a really smart guy and good guy. And he was doing all this uh, stuff that was very intriguing. And then I asked him, like, hey, listen, man, um, I'm just going to – I'm just bored. I'm just putting together this real estate T-shirt thing, I think. I'm not too sure. I kind of want to do Shopify. I'm not really sure if I should do that. And he really was like, yeah, come over. And I, we spent one or two days at his house, like, kind of – because he was doing that. He was selling, like, fight wear, and he had, like, all this inventory in his house. I'm like, this is so cool. Like, you can just kind of have a business out of your house. So he taught me how to build out my uh, – at first, I was going to do, like, gadgets. I'm like, I don't want to do gadgets, right? So then I ended up doing uh, T-shirts because I always wore real estate T-shirts wherever I go. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at one right there. That's on my treadmill. This is what my treadmill is used for, holding clothes. <laughs> and he showed me how to set that all up. And I always was really grateful for it. He just gave his knowledge. Anything that he knows, he just gives. So uh, how he got into the real estate photography thing, and at least this is how I, I remember it, is he ended up uh, losing his job. And I reached out to him. And uh, you know, we just started shooting the, shooting the shit. And he, he was like, do you have any ideas? I'm like, yeah, well, actually um, – I want to start recording videos for my listings because I don't really see anyone doing it. Uh, that may be something that might be something you'll be good at. It's right up your alley. It's some stuff that I think that you'll be really good at. So he went into one of my uh, vacant listings to just practice with a camera. And when he when he was uh, practicing, you know, he was practicing. And he gave me a video that he did before, you know, just to kind of test it out. And then I liked the quality. And then the next. Next week or so, I did my first walkthrough video tour with Josh. I mean, none of us, neither one of us knew what we were doing. It wasn't something that was mainstream. Actually, I never saw it as, as regular realtors doing that before. And he nailed it. He put together the production, the drone footage, the music, and everything. I sucked. I was horrible. I stumble <laughs> and mumble a lot. And he made me look halfway decent. And we learned together that process. And throughout that, I couldn't give him enough sustained work for him to pay his bills, so I introduced him to uh, the guy I used to do photos with. His, um, his name's Eric, and uh, he had a, he had a job for Josh where he can have more consistent roles. Um, and then at that point, at that point, um, this is more about Josh than me, so I don't want to get into the me story. But at that, that point, I simply couldn't afford him, and I hired someone else for a while. But now Josh is my guy again. But it, it, that's how I recall what happened. It, I don't know about you. What do you think? Yeah, so that that's pretty much it. Um, before I got into uh, real estate photography, 
Uh, I was working for a company called Body Logic MD. Um, they're a medical company, and I was running their their lead generation, uh, pay per click ads and Facebook ads, for five years. Um, they they needed uh, a supplement website, and I ended up learning uh, how to build one uh, via Shopify. I had a little bit of experience from building my fightwear brand. And so I ended up building them a supplement uh, brand from scratch that ended up yielding them, you know, uh, 80K uh, a month within like the first six months uh, of, of it being uh, launched. And um, I, 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 uh, I ended up losing that job in, in the middle of uh, me going on vacation to a, to a seven day cruise. And on my, on my cruise, I'm just thinking, hey, when I get back, I don't have any income. Uh, I, I don't have a job waiting for me. So right. I, I remember I, that. Yes, that's, and that's why I contacted you because I, I had the idea. I'm like, well, I know Chris is doing real estate. He sold me my house. Uh, I, I like what he does. He's a hard worker. And um, I, I know that he has to be paying someone to do his photos. And I had no idea about the real estate photography market, but I had some experience with photo and video, because when you run uh, your own small business, you either have to hire someone to do the photos and videos for your products or for whatever marketing you're trying to do, or to save money, you have to learn how to do it on your own. Um, that's why I picked up a camera. Um, I, I ended up picking up a camera so that I can learn how to shoot my own product photography, do my own video marketing for my own projects. Um, I also in that time as well, uh, had started an uh, independent record label. So right now I'm sitting in my studio behind me is, uh, a, a recording booth. I, I learned how to shoot music videos and also photos of the artists, etc. So I, I was getting very comfortable with the camera. Uh, so I thought, you know, it, it can't be that difficult, right, to shoot a uh, a property. <laughs> so uh, I, I contacted you, and yeah, you said, hey, look, uh, yeah, I, I pay this company to uh, to take photos for me, and um, you know, I pay them, uh, you know, 150 bucks per house. And I'm like, well, how many houses are, are you shooting per week, or do you have per week? And I, you, you said a few per week, right? And I'm like, I'm doing the math. I'm like, man, if I can get like five or 10 consistent realtors and, and they're all doing two or three houses a week yep. and they're charging and I'm charging them 150, 200. I'm like, that's good money. So I'm like, let me, like, yeah, let me try it out. You know, you, you, and, and look, when you don't know something, uh, offer your work for free. Um, and that's what I did. I, 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 I didn't tell you that I knew what I was doing. I said, Hey, let me try it out. Uh, experiment. And, uh, if you like the finished product, then we'll continue to 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 shoot videos, and so we did. Um, and yeah, you you basically put me on to Virtuals One, which I'm currently am working for Virtuals uh, still. So they they're one of the biggest uh, real estate photography companies in South Florida, and I also do a lot of freelance work on my own as well. Um, so I appreciate that you were able to essentially give me my the stability that I have now. Um, and yeah, so now we're working back together. Um, I guess it didn't work out with your, uh, your, your last, uh, photographer. Well, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, you know, he's a, he's a great guy. So a little bit about that story more, um, is that when Josh moved over to virtual one, uh, the relationship I had with them and him, it, it, they just, it just wasn't, it didn't make financial sense for me to pay what they wanted to charge me when I, when I knew, like, I knew I could find some, I can train and hire someone mm -hmm. else on a salary at that time to do it and be a more cost effective. And, uh, you know, basically I, I, you reached out to some people I knew who are looking for something new, like you were, and mm -hmm. I helped, I helped bring someone up and helped them with this equipment and, you know, gave them a platform like I, like I, like I did for you. Um, and he's still a great guy. We're friends. There's nothing, there's nothing there. The only difference is that, you know, I've known you forever. I've known you for the longest time. And, you know, you're my boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, and there's also, there's also a, 
mutual interest. We've always had a mutual interest in entrepreneurship and growing, and we're just curious and we're open and we don't judge one another. We're like, right, you, you know, and if right. we, but we're real with one another. Like, you'll be like, hey, Chris, I think that's stupid, but you, you, you know, you're being real about it, <laughs> but you don't offer, you don't offer negative criticism without some kind of reinforcing critique, you right. know? And I feel like that relationship that we've always uh, established with another is, is a, uh, it's a very powerful one where, um, and when you have a solid relationship with, with people on a business level, which is a very rare thing to have, mm -hmm. um, then you just wrap them up. You surround yourself with those people and not saying that the other individual is not worth being surrounded by. It was just, a we just have a, we just had a different vibe. So when I had an opportunity to work with you again, I jumped all over and that's all it is. I would work with him again. It's just the relationship of you and I was pretty, pretty strong. So we, uh, we went with that. So we're going to talk about, we were going to, we were going to delay this, um, my first interview for a while with Josh. I, I, I did want to enter him into your world. Eventually he's probably the most, uh, I would definitely highly recommend him having him in your life one way or another, but something odd happened the other day. It was on a fortunate series event that I said, Hey, this will be probably let's record this sooner or later while the situation is rather, uh, rather recent as tragic as it is. And not to bring down the show, but it's kind of, you know, the census is mostly geared towards real estate agents. Um, I wanted to talk about it. So anyway, so him and I have uh, both have a relationship with an individual who was unfortunately killed, um, last week. And, I will tell you my relationship with her and, and how this all came about. Uh, basically, um, the town that I, I, that I just, that I lived in for the past eight years, um, is Parkland, Florida. And she was also in there and she wasn't really into the real estate brokering at the time she was flipping properties, but she was in the, she was doing a lot of investment work and her and I, uh, since we're both in real estate and, and worked in the same town and we knew a lot of same people, we would converse every now and then mostly through social media. And then at one point, I think it was early, uh, early of 2020, Maybe even before that, uh, she, her and I possibly discussed her working together in some format, whether her be on my team or something, because she was kind of thinking about becoming a broker or working in real estate at the time. It didn't really materialize in anything, but she was in uh, I have a training Facebook group, suit up agents, fa uh, Facebook group. She was in there and she was participating in some of the dialogue and stuff like that. And we developed a mutual respect and friendship, mostly social. I think I've only spoken to her on the phone two, maybe three times. Most of our interaction has been online, but she was a, a quick story to kind of show her character is she posted one of her uh, properties on, on, I think it was Facebook marketplace or so or next door, one of those things. And for some reason she was getting attacked by uh, people on there. Like this house is overpriced. You're a crooked realtor. You're a horrible. I don't know why it was maybe two, three, maybe even four different people. I might have the exact facts wrong. And what I'll notice is that she wasn't replying to any of these things. And so I felt like, okay, maybe she doesn't see it and she's not, she has the right to be defended by, because maybe someone is seeing this and thinking that she's a bad person and won't hire her. So I thought that I would go on there and vouch for her. I'm like, I'm like, you know, she's a great person, a great colleague, this, that, and the other. And she responded to my, my post, whether she just liked it or said thank you or something. So that just showed me that she saw all those, all those negative things being said about her. And she was bigger than that. She was higher than that, that she didn't even respond to him was simply saying thanking me for getting her back. And I was and that really that really stuck with me because I know when I post something on <laughs> social and people fight with me, I immediately yeah. fight back. And right. I'm not bigger than it. So I was really, really impressed by that. And it just shows to her character. So anyways, what uh <clears throat> happened was uh she was shot in um the neighborhood next to mine. She's a real estate agent. She and she was sitting in her car and you probably heard it on the news. Her name's uh, Sarah Trost, and um, she was out of. I don't know this. The true motivation of the killing is not exactly out yet, but basically, she was sitting in her car inside of the driveway, and she was shot multiple times. And um, some of the theories that are out, actually, uh, People Magazine just had an article about her yesterday. Mm -hmm. One of the theories the police told her is that they believe it was a dispute between a tenant and a landlord. Um, or maybe she was, maybe he was being evicted or maybe or something to affect something happened and she ended up just taking the brunt of his rage and he's in, he's in jail now for forever. So now he, I guess he never has to worry about his rent going up. But what happened is that right up the street of the, when this happened, my son's daycare, um, is right there. Uh, my son crew, 
who is the reason why I'm exhausted today. But his daycare is right up the street, and the person who runs it, the main man, the manager of there, the the person who like kind of runs the show there, she is good friends with my wife. And then she texted me. She texted my wife. She goes, she's like, hey, Kenna, uh, just just want to see if your husband's team is all safe. A real show was just shot up the street. And I'm thinking much of it. I'm like, you okay? That's kind of odd. Maybe what happened? All right. So if you had a little glitch in the conversation, I apologize. My internet went out for a little bit, but we're back. And I think where I left off was talking about how my, my wife's friend runs daycare. And she was asking if the realtors on my team were safe because there was a realtor who was just shot. And I wasn't thinking much of it. And um, I was at lunch with my, uh, my wife and my kids because they're home from school. We grabbed lunch or we grabbing pizza. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. So we did a check. Uh, I did a, a text check to my team and everyone was safe. And then all of a sudden my wife goes, Sarah Trost. I was like, what? Like, I was just like, who? She's like, that's who was killed. I'm like, get out of here. You're joking. She's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So I immediately thought of Josh because I knew he had a working relationship with her. And uh, I texted him and he called me like right away. Like, right. Like, like a little panic in his voice as he should have been. Um, and that's how we essentially found out that that happened. And I, I thought it was a, although I'm going to be honest, this is only my fourth part podcast. Maybe only seven people are listening to this, but at least <laughs> if there are only seven people listening to it, they should know the type of character that she is. And she should be honored from someone who knows her a lot more than I do. And, and that's why I'm like, oh, Josh, let's, let's do our, our interview on, uh, unfortunately different terms, but we should do it. So if you have any insight on her and a person or a character, by all means go for it. Yeah, um, yeah, to add a little bit more to that, uh, two days before that happened, I actually was shooting a property for her. So I saw her physically two days before that. I was actually um, helping her set up uh, one of her properties. Um, she, she mainly did um, house flips. So she bought homes in distress and completely remodeled them gutted them and you know just turned around the properties and sold them and she recently started her own brokerage so she was starting to represent clients and sellers um so she texts me the day before this happened that she wanted uh, to do photos at a property in coral springs um and so that same day, I was shooting a property for you uh, in the morning. And so after your property, I was supposed to, well, I was waiting on a call from her because she was like, okay, we're scheduled. I'm just going to go check on the property, make sure everything's good. And um, so after your job, I was just waiting on a call from her so that uh, we c I can head over there and, and, and photograph her property. And I... Um, you know, never got that call, obviously, and you sent me that text. And uh, I almost, like, had to do a double take on the text because I, I was like, am I misreading this? Because you were like, you know, Sarah Tross got shot. And I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, it, it, it just didn't seem real, right? Um, and so it, it was a, a really shocking situation because of the fact that I literally just saw her the other day and I was just in a text conversation with her. I think even she had posted a few hours before on, on Facebook yep. um, with the listing photos of the property that I had just shot. Um, I did a lot of video work for her as well. Um, if, you, uh, if you guys want to see you know, what she was kind of like uh, and her personality, um, you can go over to my, my YouTube or you can just search her name and you'll see that some of the videos that pop up, um, even on the news, the ones that they were using on the news were the videos that I had shot for her. She was like a really nice person. Um, she, she, um, she was a mother. So she, she was also, she fostered a lot of dogs as well. So she, she took care of, I think like nine different dogs. Uh, she had a big house in Parkland and she would take in dogs that, you know, were getting older or needed some sort of help. Um, like I said, I think she was a mother to a, a, a daughter of, of three, very young child. She, um, she had a husband. And um, she was just generally a, like a really good down-to-earth person. I, I had many conversations with her. She was one of those realtors where 
you know, I would go to the property and, and photograph the property, but, you know, I would stay and have long conversations with her because uh, there was just interesting things that she had to say and, and, and good info that she would give me. Um, so it was a, it was a real shock and like, it was, it was really sad what happened, especially the way that it happened, because I can't imagine, I, I can only hope that it, 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 when it happened, it happened fast and she didn't yeah. suffer. I don't know the full details about, you know, what actually happened because I, I believe no one actually saw it happen. I think, um, a neighbor who was working from home heard two pops and he was like, and it sounds like two gunshots. And from what I heard, he came out, he didn't see anyone, and uh, he just saw her car. She had a, a big white Jeep, and uh, he just saw her car running. And I guess when he went up to it, uh, he found her with uh, multiple uh, gunshots. Um, so what happened to the the guy who shot? Like, at that, do, do they know? Did he run inside? Did he drive a car or drive away? So they apparently found him uh, up up north a bit, I think somewhere in, in the West Palm area. I'm I'm not sure how they knew. So if, if no one saw what happened, I, I'm not sure how they knew it was him. I'm guessing that they just put the pieces pieces together. Uh, you know, realtor at this house, uh, the tenant not home, her being shot. So I'm sure that they could easily find who was you know, the resident there. And he probably had some sort of uh, record as far as like what car he owned, et cetera. So then maybe they were able to track him that way. And and I don't know if, you know, when it caught up to him, if he just admitted it or not, because um, you really can't just go up to somebody and just, you know, <laughs> cuff him, you know. So um, I, what I'm guessing happened is, you know, he, he thought that she was the, the owner. Um, so she was going to the property, I'm guessing, to make sure that it was ready for photos. And, um, I guess he had an eviction notice against him and I'm guessing the property wasn't ready. And so she probably let him know that, Hey, you can't be here or something. And, you know, uh, this is not to sympathize or anything, but I'm also guessing that, it, it, you know, it was a few days before Christmas as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that at the, you know they say that this is the time of year where you know people who are going to snap snap um because the pressure's on at this time especially if like you're not in a good situation um so i'm getting from your house yeah i don't know i don't only think about the guy but i me me neither i i don't i don't know uh, um the full situation i can only guesstimate to to what happened but i'm guessing that would be some of the 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 rage that happened with him is getting evicted around this time of the year as well, but it does it it, it doesn't justify at all what he did. So, um, she she was back in her car and I guess he rolled up on her and it it this is a weird situation because it's like what what's the lesson here for for realtors? You know, is it because this is kind of like one of those freak accident situations and it's not very common. I mean, of course, you do hear of things happening to realtors here and there, um, but to be murdered by you know a tenant is very uncommon. And so, what what is the takeaway from this? You know, is it that now realtors should be very careful as far as uh, making sure they they have some sort of defense against them? You know, whether it be a taser, or pepper spray, or or, or or should you be armed now as a realtor? Um, is it that you know now you shouldn't? It, but even you shouldn't so, deal with evictions. You know, is it do you <laughs> do you do you get someone else to handle you know that process of evictions because you never know what's going to happen? Um, it it's something that I don't know what the right reaction is, especially as a realtor. I mean, maybe you can tell me. Uh, you know, what your thoughts are on, on that end as far as, like, is this something now that pe realtors should be aware of and careful of or be more prepared in some sort of way? I wish I were smart enough to have the answer. I don't know. I would say that every occupation has their hazards. Like, when you and I were working at the bar, you know, we had been in more 
odd ordeals with drunk unruly people than yeah. in real estate. So it like I we could have very easily been shot one of those drunken by those drunken people too. It's like everything has their hazards, and you can't you can't let it stop you from going out and doing your thing. And in just the way this particular case happened, from what I read, she was ambushed in her car. So no matter how. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know. I wasn't there. But if that's the case, if she was quote unquote ambushed and she didn't know it was coming, then there's no defending that, right? Well, that that's my thought process as well, because, you know, some some would say, OK, well, you know, make sure you, you have some sort of defense against you. But, you know, as as I, I can't ex I can't suspect that any rational realtor would just you know, be suspicious of someone coming up to them and, and, and shooting them, right? So if you're in your car and you're making a call, you know, you shouldn't be looking around the corner waiting for someone to, to and especially in Coral Springs in broad daylight, right? Like it just, this guy just was extremely irrational because what, what did he think was going to happen after yeah. that? It was, now it was, he doesn't have to worry about being evicted. Well, you know, yeah, he's yeah. in he's, he's he got, permanent he got, residence. He, yeah, permanent residence in, in jail. So, you know, he um, he's going to be there forever, uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, yeah, so I don't, yeah, I don't know what the takeaway is from that, but I, I can only say that, you know, she was a really good person. Um, she was very charming. Uh, she, she, she was a very funny and charming person. Yeah, great personality. Um, great personality. And like I said, if, if you guys want to see what she was kind of like, I do have videos of her where she's speaking. She also, I believe she um, she had some experience in TV, and that's why she was so good on camera. She was one of those realtors where I only had to do one take. Um, so, Sorry. yeah, it wasn't like, wasn't like you where like you, you need a few days. We got a whole blooper reel. <laughs> and not everyone can be a Sarah. <laughs> yeah. But so it, it was, it was easy working with her because of that, you know? So she, she knew exactly, she could talk forever and, and she was, uh, very detailed on, on how to talk about a property, et cetera. And she was a great interior designer. I mean, she, she actually came to my house one time because I, um, I was looking to do some, some renovations here at the house. And she was the type of person who was like, hey, you know, if you ever need some, some help, just call me um, and I'll, I'll come by and give you some tips. Uh, no charge. So, you know, one, one day she actually came over to the house. So it was more of a, it was a little bit more than a working relationship, you know, where, um, you know, when someone comes friendship. over. It was a friendship. Exactly. So um, I could be real with her. Um, and it's very sad. And like, I, I, man, I, it, it's still shocking. I don't, I don't know what more to say than that but well, it, was, it was a shocking situation i guess that thing i can kind of put a bow on it um is on, on this and then we can move on to happier things is that i didn't have many conversations with her but the few that i did just really validated everything you said it, to a point where she was someone i was willing to defend mm -hmm. on social media and platforms when i only had a handful of conversations you can just tell and we uh <laughs> And you can also tell her character because she was doing uh, discount brokerage stuff, which I'm against. And I would reach out to her and kind of like give her an earful about it. And <laughs> she would just laugh it off, you know, um, yeah. she didn't care. And there's other people that would take that the wrong way and start a fight. And she's like, oh, OK, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what I mean? So that was right. it. Um, as of uh, real estate stories, you know, there's been times I've never like this but i did have a gun pulled on me once in the trends in boca when i was really? doing short sales so i was doing short sales and i was putting on a lockbox for the short selling company short sales uh if you don't know uh, it was a big thing then basically if someone uh didn't they owed more they owed more than what the house was worth they couldn't sell it so we would put the house on the market and short sell it but for some reason the occupant there uh, he, I went to put a lockbox on the door. They knew I was coming, and he, he came to the door, and he lifted up a shirt with a gun. I'm like, dude, I'm just putting a lockbox on, man. Hmm. Like, that that could have been something, right? So that yeah. those are the situations that made you reflect. When I was flipping homes before I was a realtor in Opalaka, uh, there was gunshots uh, uh, down the street, and all of us ran inside the house that we were flipping in Opalaka. So it, it made you really think about those moments how, man, I did I really get lucky in those circumstances? Because they could, those people could have, snap just like this guy could have right yeah but this makes it sound like being real estate is really really a, um, a dangerous profession <laughs> i guess to some sort it is but there's a lot more dangerous professions out there yeah it's just i guess this story for some reason took off because because of the shock factor and i you know so i don't know uh, that's how i can 
I think that's that's how I can kind of wrap it up there. Which um, I don't know how you come back from that. <laughs> <laughs> Lighten it did, up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I wanted to give a little shout out to. Um, I did. You know what? I did. There was one more thing I wanted to bring up on it, and not yeah. to bring it back. It was you were talking about how this happened right before Christmas, and on Christmas Eve, when my wife and I were putting presents out for our kids. Um, I said to her, I'm like, isn't it, it's crazy. Sarah has a four-year-old that doesn't know where her mom is going to be on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like her dad right now is probably putting presents out by himself in tears while we're yeah. doing this. And, it, and we really need to be grateful for, for what we have. Right. And she was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And that first, and that night, that first night it happened, I was, I remember, so it was funny. So on the way to my house, we passed the house that this occurs, not directly we passed the neighborhood. And as we're pulling up to the light right before that, it was this the same night. And I'm thinking, because I'm a father, right? You don't have kids, Josh, yet. But one day, and you will relate to this a little more. And I'm like, could you imagine if, like, this happened to me or you? And then all of a sudden, mom or dad are not. The kids are, they're like, they're babies, you know? They will never, like, how do you? And she was like, that's the real tragedy yeah. right there. Yeah. But yeah. the good news is, if you want to kind of... My my wife work, was a social worker, and she was you know she knew that her daughter. I don't know how many kids she had. I know she had a four year old daughter. I don't know if she had more, but she was like, she's only four. It it will be really confusing for her now, but she will get over it. Um, at least I hope so. But that's the real tragedy of it all. But anyways, all right. So not to go down that road again, but that was something I wanted to bring up because that really hit home for me on that point. So. How do we segue from that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Josh's talents. What I really wanted him to come on here is he's always he always has his ear to the street. He always know has his eye out for the prize. And anything I anytime I want to dive in anything like this podcast or video content or now we're doing Facebook. Um, I'm sorry, Instagram reels and TikToks for our listings. I usually go to him. I'm like he he has a feel for everything. Um, and so, you know, he really, he's helping me out with this podcast and I wanted to provide everyone, I want everyone to get to know who you are and hopefully you can come on the podcast uh, often mm-hmm. and really just help us have our ear to the street of what's the next thing. And in your opinion, and we didn't talk about this before you came on, so I'm sorry if you're on the spot here, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you have something. In your opinion, where should real estate agents who are trying to separate themselves or elevate themselves from everyone else be focusing their time in terms of marketing what do you think if anything i think in general just the realtors should just be doing a lot more video content um it's not a matter of what platform it should be on all platforms honestly um but everything it's not just real estate but every business is moving towards video um I'm sure, especially as a realtor, that you know, because most of you all are on Facebook. Um, Facebook used to be long paragraphs of text, right? Mm-hmm. And everyone's just having conversations through text. Then uh, a lot of images, then GIFs. Then now you look at Facebook and basically it's all video. Barely anyone's actually writing more than two, two sentences anymore. Um, that's the same with every other platform. Look at Instagram. Instagram was legit a photo platform. You go to Instagram now and you scroll, it's all video, right? Same with TikTok, YouTube. YouTube is the biggest search engine in the world uh, next to Google. TikTok right now, I think some uh, statistic just came out that it was the most visited website in the world, again, second to, to Google. So... Um, you guys need to be doing a ton of video content and it doesn't matter where you, whether you think you're good on camera or not. Um, there's also videos that you can do where you don't have to be on camera. It could just be your voice and you could have an image. Um, but definitely everyone should be doing a lot more video content. And this is how you stand out as a realtor right now, because most realtors aren't doing video content. So if you're doing everything else the other realtors are doing, you're not going to stand out, right? So do what the other realtors aren't doing. Um, and when you do video, the thing is that, like, you don't have to go on TikTok and do dances. <laughs> you know, like, there's I a lot of... I recommend you don't do that, actually. Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't, don't, don't just follow those... It, it, TikTok is, is, has evolved uh, 
from you know comedy videos and and dances to there are millions of users if you search the real estate hashtag where it's realtors that are doing one minute vertical videos showing a property or giving you real estate tips or housing market tips um same thing with instagram so instagram um you could do a combination of things where you're sharing a little bit of your personal life because you got to remember that um, it's all it's not just about listing or posting how many houses you just sold or sold 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 right every realtor is doing that do a li- something a little bit different let people into your life a bit so that people are comfortable with you they know you and that's what people are looking for in a realtor they're looking for someone that they can trust it's just a person that they can trust whether that person has sold 100 homes or or one house they're just looking for someone that's going to take care of them and it's a good and honest person right who they like yeah someone that they like right so i mean and and that video does that video will take away the people who don't like you and will attract the people who do Perfect. Right, exactly. And vi- video will show you because you can only get so much information from a photo, right? So you, you know, smiling in a suit. Arms crossed. Yeah, arms crossed. The same, <laughs> everyone has the same image. You know, it's, it, they all, all realtors have a few different poses. They all have the same suit and it's all the same thing, right? So you have to stand out in some sort of way. Uh, video will let someone know uh, a little bit more about how you are as, a, as an actual person. Um, and not only does it help um, your, your prospects, but um, just everyone wants to be able to know what you can do for them, right? So That's if, it. exactly. So I, I want to know if Chris Cusimano is going to list my house, what's he going to do different than any other realtor? So I know Chris is going to, you know, he's going to get on camera. He's going to walk through my house. He's going to be like, hey, man, you know, this, these are the selling features of this house, et cetera, et cetera. And he's going to post it on, on all different type of social media channels. And do ads, retargeted ads. I'm going balls to the wall, you know. Uh, exactly. So, I mean, in, in general, I mean, just to answer the question, uh, just more video content, honestly. Um, and, I mean, there's a ton of different other things that you could do. But as far as answering like what realtors should be really focusing on right now, I think it's video content and not just because I do video, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's just the way everything is going. Any business should be doing more video content at the moment. You know, we should you always be forward thinking. Um, I worked with uh, Jackie Ellis for a while. She's a big time real estate uh, personality down here. And she's like, the reason why I work with you, she said this to me, it was the reason why I like working with you because you're always innovating, you're always finding things and that made me feel good. And that reminds me, so I'm actually reading this book here, which was conveniently on the shelf over there, good thing, because I wouldn't be able to show it to you, but it's called Purple Cow. Josh, I recommend you getting it. Mm-hmm. And the, I'm just give you a quick point. I don't have any affiliated links. I don't, whether you read this or not, it's fine, but it's by Seth Godin. And um, I was reading another book that he just released here, and then I really liked it called The Practice. So I got his, so I found this one was actually sitting on the shelf in my office. So I started reading it. Anyways, the point in w- where this ties in this book to this is that in the very beginning of the book, he talks about how he was in France and him, his family, they don't they don't really see cows all that often. Excuse me. And they were driving down the countryside like mile after mile after mile, cow after cow after cow after cow. And these cows were they were really intrigued by him because they never really saw him in the city that they were in. And then all of a sudden, all as exciting these cows were to look at at first, they were boring. <laughs> He's like cows weren't cows weren't exciting anymore unless there was a purple cow. Then that would excite me. And that reminds me. So when I go to my wife's aunt and uncle's house in Illinois. They also, they have cows. Kids get excited about it. But what we do somewhat similar, they have those big giant windmills like the size of football fields. And when you drive through through them, when you first enter this windmill like field, which goes on almost forever, you're like, oh my God, they're huge. They're literally like the size of football fields. Like they're crazy. And you're just in awe of, you just see windmill after windmill after windmill. And then after 10, 15 minutes of it, you're like, no, nah, it's another windmill, right? Yep. So my point is, you always got to, what's your purple cow? What's going to stand out? And when I first started linking up with Josh, doing the walkthrough video tours was something I never saw before. And I thought that would be a purple cow, right? And then um, now we're working on how to do that in conjunction with uh, TikToks and Reels for our listings. 
that, in my opinion, is the next purple cow. And then we're going to find something later on that's going to be the next purple cow. But if you're doing the same thing that everyone else is over doing over and over again, it's just going to be washed out. It's going to be, you're not, no one's going to think you're exceptional. And I think that's where my success person has came in is always subconsciously looking for purple cows and not realizing I was until I read the book. So get this book. It's really cool. Um, but video content to, to jump on that. I, I preach this. The good thing about, I preach it to my team all day long. They're, I think the biggest problem that people have is they're not sure about the content that they should be putting out there. And I would say there's endless content as realtors. We get emails all day long of what's happening in, in the industry. You can subscribe to Keeping Current Matters and you can see all the data analytics that they do and talk about it. In the United States, the rates went up like this. So what does this mean for the future and your family, right? You could take data and talk about it and be that expert that people want you to be. Um, and the number one thing the sellers say, the transition a little bit, the number one things the sellers say they want from their realtor is see them actually marketing the property because most real estate agents – they do the three P P's, right? They place a sign in the yard, they put it in the MLS, and then they pray that someone buys it. Those are the three P's. Mm -hmm. And but if you show a seller that you're going above and beyond, that you are always looking for the purple cow, you always done something new and fresh and exciting, then why wouldn't they hire you? And the cool thing is, a lot of people. I'll let you. Oh, sorry, one more point. And yeah. then um, the people. The good thing is, our competitors, our colleagues, realtors, they're so hung up of how they look, that lisp, you know. And all these stupid things. I have one eye. This is this one. This one that is more closed than the other. That kills me. My nose is crooked. I have random gray hair. So I'm almost forty. Right. There's all these <laughs> things I hate about myself. I mumble and I stumble, but I don't care, you know. And you have to have that. I don't give a crap mentality. Or someone's just gonna. I'll 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 I'll, I'll take that closing. I'll take that listing if you want, you know. But hey, anyways. So get get uh. Get strong, get confident, and just start doing some content. And then you'll figure it out. You can't figure it out unless you try. That yeah. And that's super important because um, e everyone's not good in the beginning with anything. You know, Some people, yeah, are naturally talented at things, but for the most part, that's just how things work. You, When you first start anything, you're not necessarily good at it. So you're not going to be the best realtor in the world day one. So you're not going to be the best on camera day one, right? Yeah. You're going to stumble. You're not really going to know exactly what to say. But as long as you're learning from your mistakes, again, like I said earlier, you know, if you're going to fail, fail fast and, and learn from your failure. So watch your video and be like, okay, what did I do wrong? What did I forget to mention? Note it down. And then on the next one, just mention those things and 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 fix the errors from before. Um, watch what other people are doing. You know, you can easily just go on YouTube and search real estate listing videos or walk through tours By and Christmas you'll see tomorrow. some of these huge agents that this they've been doing these this these things for years. And look at the videos that are getting a ton of views. And just copy and paste, like copy and paste what is working and just follow that model. And eventually, once you know how to do it and you got the fundamentals correct, then add your little spin to it. Then that's when you can start getting a little bit more creative and being like, all right, I know exactly how to do it like he does it. Now I'm going to add a little something extra to it to stand out a bit. Um, but it, it takes time, right? Um, and then... Real quick, I wanted to go over, like, I just found a few different statistics on, like, specifically real estate uh, video marketing. So um, videos attract 300% more traffic for nurturing leads. Um, real estate listings with video receive 403% more inquiries than uh, their video list counterparts. 85% uh, of buyers and sellers want to work with an agent that uses uh, real estate videos. Yep. Um, eighty six percent of home buyers use video to research a particular community. So neighborhood tours, um, like like we've done before. Um, seventy percent of home buyers watch video house tours. Um, so just, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, why why wouldn't you do it? It's a lot easier than than scrolling through photos. It's you can just quickly watch the video. Everyone has uh, a TV with them. And they could do it. It takes a minute or two. Um, and then like a few different types of videos that you can do because uh, people get hung up on just doing listing videos, right? Um, because remember when you're, here's the other thing that, to remember, um, especially when you're posting on social media, you need to be posting content almost like 
once a day or twice a day uh, so that uh, the algorithm picks you up and so that people keep you in their mind. That's all what a realtor is. It's that when someone asks me, hey, do I know a realtor? Um, it's just whoever pops up to my mind, Top that's who mind. I'm recommending. You know, I'm not like, oh, well, this guy sold seven houses in the last days, but this guy sold five. And then this guy, you know, I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm just thinking about, oh, who do I remember? And it's all it's all branding, right? So um, a few different type of videos that you could do are listing videos. You can do intro videos where you're like, especially when you're starting out, you need an intro video. It's like, hey, I'm so-and-so with this uh, company or brokerage. And I work in this area and, you know, I'm, I'm friendly, you know, like Chris. Um, you can do testimonial videos once you start getting your first sales so that people can, you know, give their feedback on camera and you can show that to other people. It's like, look, I've worked with um, these people before and, you know, here are their testimonials about me. Um, you could do, again, neighborhood guides. Like Chris and I, we've gone uh, through Parkland. And we visited uh, multiple different businesses in Parkland because especially through COVID, right? So people are moving down to Florida for the first time. Not only do they want to find a good house, but they want to know what the area is like, right? And it's not easy to find out that information. I mean, you could Google map, you know, restaurants or whatever in that area, but it's much easier if, if you do the work for them. You already know the area. So just take them to a few spots that you think are interesting to someone who's moving into Coral Springs or Parkland or uh, Pompano uh, or Fort Lauderdale, right? Just show them around, the, you know, the neighborhood. Um, live videos, right? So go on live. You know, everyone on their phone can easily go on live on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and just go live for 10 minutes. And whoever jumps in there, do a Q&A, answer some questions, just show your face. Everyone can do that 10 minutes a day. Just go live, talk, you know, you don't even have to talk real estate. Just, you know, talk shit with people, right? But like, as long as like, you're interacting with the people who follow you, right? Because you you will run out of, people don't just want to see a ton of real estate content all the time, right? They, they like, actually don't want to see that. They want to see more about you, your life, your family. You exactly. Know? Like, like, that's what they want. You know, like, it, that's why people are most likely to, like, if your friend becomes a realtor, you're, you're likely to use them because, like, you know them, right? So you're like, you'll, you'll give them a chance. Oh, hey, I just became a realtor. If you ever need to list your property, hit me up. Okay, cool. I know you. So I don't care if you've sold a property before or not. That's how you give people chances. Uh, do market updates, too. Um, you know, and again, it's not for everyone, but it, it gives you content that you can put out on a consistent basis. And and also, if you're trying to rank on YouTube, then you need to do some stuff that is search friendly because there are some people that might be looking for uh, uh, market updates or uh, properties in Delray, properties in Coral Springs. So make everything search friendly. Just make sure you're titling it correctly and just be as simple as possible. Um, it's easy to see what people are searching for as well. If you go on YouTube and you go to the search bar, you know, just type in real estate and then it's going to it's going to give you a list of suggestions to add next to real estate. Um, so if you type in real estate, Florida, then it might give you a, a few other search queries that people are searching for. And that will instantly give you ideas of videos that you can create. Um, one thing that I really want to talk about, too, is and this might apply more to realtors that are just getting started or are thinking about getting started in real estate, but this also applies to existing realtors and that's branding. So uh, what I mean by branding is like right now, if you're listening to this, if you take your phone and you go to Google and you search Chris Cusimano, you're going to see that on the first page of Google, you're going to see Chris Cusimano's, uh, his business account, uh, his Google My Business his website, his homes, homes by Kuzi, his Facebook page, uh, his images, uh, his listing on realtor.com. You're going to see YouTube video recommendations that he's done, offers, reviews, um, Twitter, LinkedIn. Basically, he takes up the whole first page of Google. That's his business card, you know, because a lot of realtors are, you know, giving me or handing out business cards, pieces of cardboard. <laughs> that I'm going to lose. Like, so when was the last time you, like, do you have somewhere in your house where you keep all your business cards and, like, as soon as you remember, like, like 
No one really, I mean, look, it, it's best practices to have business cards, but at the end of the day, it's much easier for me to just say, hey, just search my name. My name's Chris Cusimano. Search me on any platform. Just type in my name and you'll see, you'll see my work, right? And, and that's another reason, like, for example, my name is Josh Vega, but that's kind of a common name. So if you Google Josh Vega, um, you're going to see some random people show up and it's hard for me to, to rank for my, for my name. Thus, why I have the alias and why all my work is under Bobby Millett. And I, 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 I beg you, just do, if you're just getting started or, or recently thinking about getting into real estate, or again, if you're already in real estate, Google your own name, right? And see what comes up. Now, just spend a few hours trying to think of like what you're going to be going by as or what the name of your real estate company is going to be. And it will be 10 times easier for you to rank if you just pick something that's not already taken. So if you search Bobby Millette right now on Google, again, I take up all of the first page of Google. You'll see all my videos, my all my social media profiles, everything. No one else is ranking for that name. And that's because I spent some time just thinking about a name that no one was using. And I just started creating content and all of my social media platforms are under that name. So you I don't need to give you a business card. All I need to say is like, hey, what's your Instagram? Hey, what's your website? Bobby Millett. Bobby Millett. Google it. It'll show up. Go on YouTube. Bobby Millett. All of my work is on there, right? And that's the purpose of me using that alias. So that's something that I think everyone should um, definitely do. Google your name right now and see what comes up. It will be way easier for you to start ranking and it looks good it looks good for someone that uh, a, pros- a prospective uh, client that the fact that you're taking up all of google and you're not hidden away on page two or three right um and you could do this as well there's i'm going to give you another little tip here so there's a website called name check and check is without the e you go to name check and basically what this website does is you can put in um any name and it'll search all the social media platforms all at once and it'll search uh, available website domains, etc. And it'll tell you which ones are available and which ones are taken. And this is a quick and easy way to test out whether the name you've chosen or whatnot is a good fit because you don't want to start your business with a very common name or business name that the Twitter, Instagram, website, LinkedIn is all taken already. Because now you're going to have to add Chris Cusimano underscore 86. Uh, that's my Twitter. Oh, what's your Instagram? Chris underscore Cusimano 420. You know, so like that, just doing that will put you ahead of the, the game like easily without any work. Because if it's you don't do marketing that, 101, yeah. it's marketing 101. Exactly. If you don't do that, the only way that you're going to start ranking for your name is spending a lot of money and a lot of time to work on organically ranking and doing a lot of SEO and building links from other companies and and getting referrals, or you're going to have to pay Google to basically show your name at the top. You're going to have to run ads for your own name. So just that, that's one of the biggest tips I can give you. Just spend a few hours coming up with a unique name. Go go under that name and build your business under that. And that, that will save you so much time. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You, you brought up the three different things I wanted to talk about. Um, I wrote, I was writing them down as you were saying them. It's funny. So when I'm, I'm, active, I'm actively online in a lot of realtor Facebook groups, and sometimes we'll get into a dialogue and p- people have their opinions. And some people's opinions, <clears throat> I'm just like, that is just the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> and then I'm like, who is this guy arguing? So I'll like look him up and you can't find their information anywhere they don't even have a realtor.com profile and they're a realtor and yep. i'm like why am i having a conversation with this dude yep. i can't verify his sales he he's acting he obviously has a lot of time on his hands to be arguing well i guess i do too to be <laughs> arguing on facebook but right so it's like just doing that alone like if you're if you can't find a real estate agent online why the heck would you hire them Yep. Yeah, <laughs> they, don't, they don't show up. Your, your listing is not going to show up, you know, because like. So why are you hiring them? Exactly. Their job is to market. Their job is to market, negotiate, and be transparent with you, right? That's, those are the three main, main jobs. Yep. And if they can't market, then 
obviously, you know, then why would you hire them if a third of what, you know, okay, anyways. And if they don't have a lot of deals in business, they obviously don't have experience negotiating. So why mm -hmm. would you hire them? Anyway, yep. so that was that. Another thing, so you mentioned a good point about neighborhood tours, and we need to book these again because mm -hmm. I, when you said that, I was looking at my other screen, and I, I'm looking at it now on YouTube. The number one watched video uh, for on my page is the Parkland video that I explained in four minutes, Parkland in four minutes. Mm -hmm. And then, so obviously that's a very – you know, powerful information. We need to do one. Can we do one for, can we schedule this? West Boca, East Boca, Coral Springs. We need yep. to do that. Let's put that on the, uh, the calendar. And another thing is you're the one who gave me, uh, you keep pushing me to try different thumbnails. You keep pushing me to change the titles on my things. And I have changed it. So my titles used to be um, just the address, mm -hmm. you know, and now I put in home tour or the price, something that's going to grab attention. And I've noticed, so the one video I just put up, and this might not sound a lot, but this is not paid stuff. Uh, my most, the one we did in Delray, I got 98 views in just one day, which is a lot mm -hmm. for just organic, just for one day. But just taking your advice with eye popping and catching uh, thumbnails and titles. So that's that. Um, this is why it's really important to have a relationship with Josh and why I want him on this more often for you guys so he could share whatever he's thinking about and what he's researching. Because, you know, he doesn't have any kids. He has a lot of time. <laughs> uh, wait, one, one thing, an another good tip is, um, so a, a lot of people wonder how do algorithms work on all these different social media platforms. Like, it seems like they're constantly, if you're keeping up with them, then they're constantly getting updated. They're adding something new. Um Here's the thing that you only really need to focus on, and and this this universally applies to Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and that's retention rate. So retention rate just means how long people stick around for your video. So, for example, on YouTube, and you can see this in your analytics on YouTube, and I'm sure you can see them on other platforms as well, but specifically on YouTube. So you have to think about it as if you're the owner of, of YouTube and how you need to, you have a billion videos being uploaded every single day. How do I determine which videos to rank and recommend, et cetera? And so one of the things would be, okay, the title, right? So the title is descriptive. So Park, uh, Parkland Neighborhood Tour 2021. All right, the, the algorithm understands what that video is. Now, if someone clicks on your video, and here's the other thing, click-through rate. So the thumbnail needs to make some sort of sense and, and, and be coherent to that title, right? So uh, if your thumbnail doesn't show you as a realtor or doesn't show Parkland in the background or anything like that, probably less likely for someone to click into the video. So make sure that your thumbnail is relevant to your video and to your title. Now, when someone jumps on the video, they're like, hey, okay, I want to see this Parkland tour. Um, they jump on your video, and it's just uh, it's a car video, okay? There's nothing about Parkland. Uh, that person is going to immediately leave that video, right? So the retention rate is low because you had, let's say, the, the video was 10 minutes, and everyone who clicks on there, and this is what's called clickbait, right? So there, there's a, a balance between clickbait, right? You don't want to get too clickbaity and you 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 want to have some sort of clickbaitiness so people actually click through on the video versus another one, right? So you want to make sure that the content you're providing makes sense and you want to make sure that that person sticks around long enough for YouTube or any other platform to be like, okay, it seems like users uh, are, are understanding this content and they're sticking around long enough at least 50% of the time, or they're watching at least 50% of the video. That's a decent retention rate where they're at least watching half of it or a little bit more. I would say like good retention rate would be like around 70%. So people are getting through most of the video and that will signal to YouTube that, all right, title makes sense, click through rate is good and the content is good as well. So then what YouTube will do is that it will recommend it to other people who might be searching for something similar or who might be subscribed to other channels that post similar content. And this is how you will get more exposure because YouTube will be like, this video makes sense, it, it has good metrics, let me recommend it out to other people. 
And so the same thing for Instagram and TikTok. And it doesn't matter. Video length doesn't matter to an extent if your retention rate is good. So if you have a one minute video or a one hour video, as long as people are watching the majority of the video, you have good retention rate. So if they watch uh, 55 minutes of a video or whether they watch 55 seconds of your one minute video, that's still the same retention rate. Um, so you just need to make sure that you're making engaging content and you're not adding fluff. In the beginning, just don't add extra stuff that people don't care about. You think about your intro. Is your intro too long before you get to the point of the video? Is your outro too long? Did you? Because here's what happens. If they're searching for a specific piece of information and uh, halfway through the video, you give them that information, they might be done. And so the rest is just like maybe you ranting about something else. That's all stuff that you can cut because most people, once they get the information they need, they will probably back out of the video. So this is just something that you need to think about when you're creating any type of content is what's the goal of this piece of content here? Um, I just want to keep the user's attention as long as possible without any of the extra fluff in the beginning or the end. Also, in the beginning, give a quick little overview to confirm to people that they're on the right video. So if they're on the video for a Parkland tour, right in the beginning of the video in a few seconds say, hey guys, welcome to, my name is Chris Cusimano and today I'm gonna give you guys a full tour of Parkland, blah, blah, blah. So they know that they're in the right spot. And just keep them engaged throughout the video. And that will basically give you what you need to start growing your social media channels. But just think of it that way. Retention rate. That's the most important thing that you need. Then focus on all the other stuff, uh, hashtags and all that, uh, and keywords and all that after. But just make sure you're providing good content. So we are in, a good thing you said that a couple of points is that inside the Pseudop Agents training. So we have the pseudopagents.com where you can log in and get what we have in there. But also live on Tuesdays, we talk about all these things that we're working through. And one thing on the schedule for this for this year is that we're going to master YouTube. We're going to dive into all, we've already started actually, dive into all the trainings that we can find, read as many books, study the algorithms, and really figure out what's the perfect way up until that point for real estate agents or any small business really to market themselves on that. Um, and when, that, when we do that, I would really, really love for you to come on and kind of you know, spot checkers, because you're really on top of this stuff. I'm ex really, really excited uh, for that. And I think we've been talking for a while, so it's going <laughs> over an hour now. I know you got things to do, and I have the things to do. I do want to appreciate you for your time and tell everyone where they can find you and what services that you can offer them if they're interested. <laughs> well, again, um, I'm not even going to give you a website. I'm just going to say if you're interested in my services, you can literally Google Bobby Millette, and my name is is right here, the spelling. So I do freelance video and photo content. Mainly I'm doing real estate at the moment as far as the majority of work. I also work for Virtuals One, which again is uh, one of the biggest photography uh, companies here in South Florida. So you can contact me through them or through my uh, personal websites or Instagram. However, I'm on all social media platforms. So send me a DM or a comment and I will respond. I do th see them. But that's, that's it. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions, um, I, I can answer them. Um, hit me up. I'm friendly, just like Chris. <laughs> don't, don't take my tagline, dude. <laughs> that's a, that's, <laughs> that's going to be my tagline, too. <laughs> well, we're not competitors. You guys. <laughs> so we're, we're both friendly, okay? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, if you're interested in, in any of the stuff that I do, just Google Bobby Millette um, or contact me through Virtuals One. And, and that's it, guys. I, I appreciate your time, and I, I thank you, Chris, for having me on here, and I will come back any anytime that you need. Uh, and I, I, I enjoy helping people out and giving people the tools for them to do it on their own. That is the truth. So if you are in the Southeast Florida market, I'm just going to add to that. And I highly recommend that you do video walkthrough tours 
for a couple of reasons. There's a bunch of pieces of content on there. Well, one besides the fact that your sellers are going to love you for it and then other people are going to hire you for it. But for selfish reasons, for building content, you need to be creating a lot of content. I've spoke about this before. In a listing video tour, you could do a reel and a TikTok. A reel, or you could do an Instagram reel, Facebook reel, or TikTok. You could take that parts of snippets of that and put those on your stories. You could do a walkthrough video tour. And then if you're like me, you make a lot of mistakes, you can have a blooper reel, which actually I'm going to be posting some of my recent bloopers. Um, that's another piece of content. So if you're in a content rut, every listing you have, is a treasure trove of it if you get listening videos done. And Josh is really good at that stuff. He really motivated me to move in that direction. So again, thank you, sir. And um, so this was our fourth episode. We are going to probably look back one day and cringe at this as we were talking about earlier that we're, you're not really good at something until you do it over and over again. But mm -hmm. that's part of the process. And if you um, – I, I really hope you guys will consider subscribing to this. You can find me on my YouTube channel my uh, or find us on Facebook. Our Facebook group is uh, Suit Up Agents. And also, I don't, I don't know. If you're watching this a replay, we might be out of it. But if you're listening and watching, we had the four marketing secrets – uh, ebook. Well, it wasn't ebook. Now it's a physical book. There's 16 pages of it. They're the four secrets that I, uh, when I interviewed a bunch of real estate agents on how to grow their business, I put it a simple, I think it's like six, less than 20 pages to read to help grow your business. We're offering this for free. Just help us out with the shipping costs. That's at suitupagents.com backslash free book. Definitely get it. If you just do one of these things in here, your business will grow. Suitupagents.com backslash free book and connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and same with uh, Josh, a.k.a. Bobby Willette. And once again, Josh, thank you for your time, and I will see you on the next one. All right, have a good one. You too.